Stephen Fry is an actor, author, comedian, activist, and former Twitterer. Stephen, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure, David. Nice to be here. You are giving me 10 minutes. We're jumping. We're on Larry King's set. Yeah. I got a bonus 10 minutes with you. Uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> I you were about to say you had a boner. I, had I, a, just, <laughs> I do have an effect on people, but that's really uh, strong. Well, well give, me, give me a couple <laughs> yeah, minutes. Okay, 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 good start. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've thrown you a loop there, haven't so I? So everything that, that you're about, that I know about you, mm -hmm. are the exact things that I talk about on the show all the time, about atheism and free thinking mm. and secular values, all of these things. Do you fear for these things right now? Because I think they're in a very precarious position. Yes, I do, David, actually. And I think, I suppose one would bundle it all up as to say one fears that the the advances of the Enlightenment are being systematically and deliberately pushed back. Um, not deliberately by everybody, because quite a few people who are doing it don't even know what the Enlightenment was. Or, um, but, I mean, America is an example of a country that was founded on principles of the Enlightenment by, uh, by people who had read Kant and, and Paine and, 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 and the, the philosophers, Voltaire and others, who had, who had opened up the idea of free thinking and casting off the shackles of ecclesiasticism, I suppose, of being ruled by the church. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and America was the great experiment in, in which all this was to, be, um, it was to be put into the form of a state, a state that was benevolent and free and open and not ruled by religion and not ruled by, uh, by, by enforced thinking. Uh, and it all went horribly wrong. Yeah. I, I'm not saying America's went horribly wrong. But it's, I, it's, I just it's, mean it's, that, it's you know, I mean, it, it went horribly wrong, unfortunately, in terms of within 100 years, sparking off the, the most bloody civil war in human history. Um, just as an internecine conflict, nothing had been bloodier, as you yeah. well know. So that was a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, somehow then crime, gang violence uh, started in Chicago and New York. And of course, the West was opened up in the bloodiest way imaginable with genocide and, yeah. and, and gunfire. And, um, and this, the beautiful, calm marble pillars that you think of, the elegant, harmonious sort of architecture, both intellectual architecture and physical architecture, that, that America was supposed to represent became so blood spattered. Yeah. So you're saying we're not a perfect society. No. By no means le are you any less perfect there than Britain or or any other. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, there's an irony at the heart of it, and I am, as you rightly said, an atheist. But funnily enough, perhaps more than that, I'm not a rationalist. I'm an empiricist, and I think there's a very important difference when mm. thinking about thought. Uh, empirical thought is about uh, seeing whether something is true, experimenting with it, finding out, testing it. Um, and sometimes rationalism can be superstition. Um, um, you know, you, you can say rationally that you have this, like Pascal had a rational theory of light, um, and it took, it took Newton to poke a hole in some cardboard. Right. And that's the empirical way of saying, no, it's just look. So look. that's really just science. You're down with science. Down really. with science, but a very particular view, yes, empirical science is a very important side of it. You know, I mean, of course, writing sums on a blackboard is important as well, but they've got to be tested. That's yeah. why I love the Large Hadron Collider and things like that. But um, I don't know how we got to this, <laughs> why, well, well, why I raised that issue. Well, all sort of couched oh, yeah. in, in thinking, when it clear came, yeah. thinking. Which... Absolutely, clear thinking, which is a phrase uh, that, as you know, I, I value highly from, from Bertrand Russell. But, and the empirical side of it is this, and it's worth thinking. Um, countries that have kings and queens, which are rationally stupid, weird ideas <laughs> are empirically freer and more socially just than countries that don't. Consider that. Look at the world now. Look at social justice, happiness, freedom and equality in the world. And you're thinking Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Benelux countries uh, uh, and uh, um, Britain, <laughs> which does have very high levels of social justice, mm. and, uh, and Holland. And these countries have kings and queens. And so they have constitutional monarchies. So it isn't, it, that's what I mean by being empirical. Right, well, that's I'm, tough... I'm not saying, therefore, you must have a king and queen in order to be free, but all I'm saying is you, having one doesn't stop you 
mm -hmm. from being freer, from being opener. I mean, these are very open societies, Denmark and, and, uh, and Sweden and, no and Norway in particular, incredibly open societies. Yeah. Um, but they're people, suffering a little bit from their openness, aren't they, right now, with all this immigration stuff? I mean, it sounds yeah. like some of the underpinnings of it are... It are is. It's, it's, it's becoming, it is becoming problematic, there's no question. But that's... A, and so, similarly, um, I am not necessarily in favour of separation of church and state. And the reason I'm not is that I come from a country where church and state are absolutely like that mm -hmm. and is the most secular society I have ever experienced, has the highest level of atheism anywhere. Yeah. And America has separation of church and state. And not only do they all believe in God, they all believe in bloody angels. Yeah. You... <laughs> 74% of Americans think angels walk on the earth. Yeah, you told me oh, before. I'm sorry. You told me before we started you're moving here half of the year. I think yeah, once you I really love once you really <laughs> find out what that's about, you may uh, push that down a little bit. I love this country. I don't get me wrong. I I mean, you know, the you love it what you what you mock you love. You, you wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't mock it, 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 um, some of the sides of America if I didn't value America so much. One of the movies that you've been in that I absolutely love, we mm. talked about it a second ago, uh, was V for Vendetta. Yeah. And interestingly, in V for Vendetta, um, the, it was the author authoritarian right that was coming after everyone's rights and everyone's speech. And there's an amazing scene with you and you have this Quran that you're talking about. And yeah. you say you love the imagery of it and all of this, but it's the right that's coming after it. And I find in America right now, it's the left, what, mm. what people are referring to as the regressive left mm. that seems to be coming after language and speech. Do you, do you see that? Does that? Is that happening across the pond too? I suspect it um, is. We, we fear that it's going to happen more and more because America leads and, and Britain follows in all kinds of ways. And I think it started to happen in Britain with the removal of, or the attempted removal of statues of people who are considered unlikable. Um, uh, that were once very beloved. Once that beloved suddenly, and yeah. have become in a very 1984 way unpersons. Uh, and suddenly somebody, because they were an imperialist, Cecil Rhodes is the example I'm thinking of, who is, a, uh, who is probably best known in America because of the Rhodes scholarships that Americans take to get sure. to Oxford. Uh, and he founded the country called Rhodesia, hence its, hence, hence its name, uh, which is now Zimbabwe, of course. And he was the founder of De Beers and various diamond things. And he was a, he was a real empire builder. And he was, I'm sure, a monster. He once said to have been born British was to have drawn <laughs> first prize in the lottery of life. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, this is a guy but, who yeah, he, he has, has things There's on. a big statue of him or a sculpture of him or something in, in, in his Oxford College. And there was a movement to, because people were offended by this because he stood for, you know, he stood for values that we now regard rightly, I think, as, as, as terrible, you know, stealing other people's countries. Right. Not particularly. Not, not a great Not idea. a good thing to do and, yeah. and, and raiding all their, their mineral wealth. Yeah. Um, but to, to remove his statue, um, it strikes me as being stupid. I mean, the, the way to fight colonialism and the ideas behind it is not to, is not to pull down statues. Yeah. It is, it is to actually to reveal, to say who he is. This is who this man was. Look at him. Yeah. Um, so he this might is, occasionally throw an egg at it. Yeah, and this is like when in America we now don't, they won't show repeats of the show Dukes of Hazard because yeah. they had a Confederate flag on it. Or I'll even hear, you know, Thomas Jefferson, people say, well, you know, it's known that he was sleeping with one of his slaves. And people say, well, he was a rapist and we should now. So he but he also, he also octoroon. helped free the slaves. Yeah, you know? I know. It's because life is complicated, and nobody wants to believe that life is complicated. Yeah. This is the problem. I suppose you might call it the infantilism of our culture. Um, uh, you know, the food people eat is pappy soft food that barely needs a knife and fork to be eaten. It doesn't look mouth like that. And it's sugary drinks that grown-ups have with baseball caps on. It's a baseball cap. <laughs> Wear a baseball cap on a baseball field. Right. Nowhere else. Right. Do you understand? And don't drink these drinks once you're over 12 years old. No, just don't. And above all, when you go to the cinema, don't go and see superheroes hitting each other. That's for children. <laughs> Do you understand? Oh, sounds it's... like somebody didn't get the bad guy. I roll yeah. in, uh, Batman, <laughs> Superman, jeez. I know it does. Yeah. But seriously, you know, there is deep infantilism yeah. in the culture. And, and that extends, uh, you know, it's, you can laugh at it you know, in terms of what people wear and what films they see, but um, in terms of the way they think, they can't bear compl comp complexity. The idea that things aren't easy to understand, that there's a mm, but there's a ah, you have to think. There are gradations. And there are, you know, that no one wants that. They want to be told, or they want to be able to decide and say, "This is good. 
this is bad. I'm saying so. Anything that in any way conflicts with that is uh, not to be born. Yeah. And on student campuses, this idea of... Um, oh, yeah. Trigger warnings. There Safety. are many great plays in which contain rapes. And the word rape now is even considered a rape. It, yeah. To say the word rape <laughs> is to rape. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an, it has an interesting Latin root, and the word raptor comes from the same root, rapine, and there are all kinds of words from it, violate, you know, these words. They're terrible things, and they have to be thought about clearly. But if you say you can't watch, you can't watch this play, you, you know, you, you can't watch Titus Andronicus, uh, um, or you can't read it in a Shakespeare class, or you can't read Macbeth because it's got children being, being, being killed in it. Um, and, and it might trigger something when you were young that upset you once because Uncle touched you in a nasty place. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a great shame. And we're all very sorry that Uncle touched you in that nasty place. But uh, you get some of my sympathy. But your self-pity gets none of my sympathy because self-pity is the ugliest emotion in humanity. And get rid of it because no one's going to like you if you feel sorry for yourself. The irony is we'll feel sorry for you if you stop feeling sorry for yourself. Just grow up. Yeah. All right, I love that. Hopefully, you'll come back. We'll do, we'll do a proper hour. This okay. is crazy. Yes or no? Am I going to get you back on Twitter? I would love it, Dave. Yeah, I'd wait, love it. I, I got you on that, but Twitter. You coming back? Yes oh, or no? Oh, that? Twitter, maybe. I got a maybe. All right, <laughs> well, you know that. where to find. It'll be at Stephen Fry if he ever does return on Twitter.